In a sense, of course you do, because in a sense, we're in the cosmos, we're in the world around us, we are part of the world. But here's what I would say, look, I agree with you that we don't want to follow any man-made religions. And I also agreed with your point that God is, is gender neutral, right? So it can't be a man and it can't be a woman, right? So all of these points are things I would say are agreements. Here's what I would say though, if you agree that there is a reasoning behind everything that exists and that reasoning is, a, is attributed to a higher power. Let's say that higher power is God, yeah. for the sake of argument. Now what is, one. pardon? Yeah. One. Yeah. yeah, all right, so this higher power now has created everything around us. I think you've come to that conclusion. Okay, fine. It's not, everything is not just a random generation. What is the relationship we should have with that particular higher power? Yeah. And what you seem to be communicating to me, which I agree with you to some extent, is that that relationship we should have with the higher power is one which everything else in creation is having with that higher power. So we want to be, you said we want to be one with nature in a sense, yeah? No, I didn't say that. Go on, tell me, tell me. <laughs> tell me. So I, really, I actually do believe that there is evolution and I do believe that life as we know it now has come from chaos and from evolution. Okay. But I believe specifically human beings are my emotional set that I cannot be replicated by an animal because I did not evolve from an animal and I was given a life by something different but obviously you can go into the Natural History Museum and you can clearly see how humans have evolved to some extent but then there's this missing link oh that's handy isn't it and a big bang but then if you look at animals you can actually see how there has been processes throughout the changes of the earth's life cycle in the last millennium millions of years that have made animals be able to live the way that they've lived however I believe humans and animals aren't, aren't just from the same aren't from the same breed and that my my God inside me, so everybody say God, is my conscience, is my ability to love, and is my ability to interact with other people and make them feel loved as well. What you seem to be saying, communicating is that, all right, there's all of these processes that are taking place on Earth. Yep. They appear to us to be random, yep. but then there is, there seems to, there seems to be yep. some kind of power that's guiding everything. So if you're talking about animal evolution, okay, go on. so for instance, say there's um, animal evolution, there's a big wipeout, lots of the species die. So I've got five types of tiger. One type of tiger's got a especially long fur coat. Four types of those tigers will die out, one will survive, and then they will breed those rest of the tigers, and then they will um, individually have their own genetic mutations, how evolution works, right? That's not somebody who's got like magic wand, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. No, I understand. Oh, no, no, I get it. But here's what I want to say to you. Yeah. If, let, me, let me deal with this contention straight on, right? Okay, right? The point of mutations, or what's referred to sometimes as random mutations, yeah? It's sometimes used in atheistic discourse to try and do away with the idea of let's say an organizer yeah. or the ultimate an architect or something. And yeah. this is kind of like where, where Charles Darwin, he started off with. Yeah. He started off actually in his Origins of Species by saying that there is an architect yeah. and this is the process that he's saying. And then he went off to talk about actually there may, there may not like be. Right, so he started refuting William Paley and so on. But the point I wanted to make to you is this, is that most atheists that I've come across, let me, let me give you one name, Sam Harris, okay, Sam Harris is, an, is, a, is one of the most popular pop atheists in, in, in the world now, yeah? He says he believes in determinism. Determinism is basically this. He says that everything that comes before has a reason or causation. There's an uninterrupted line of causation. In other words, what I'm saying to you right now is not something I'm saying out of free will, but it's because I'm pushed out of necessity to say it. Okay. Now, if you think about what atheists say, most of... Most of Listen, bro, I'm just speaking to the... I'll speak to you later, brother, yeah? This guy's a bit weird, man. He's embarrassing himself in front of the people. Yeah. Now, having said that, what I was going to say was this, is that uh, if you believe, like Sam Harris does, and like most atheists do, that in fact, everything, all the orders are determined because there's an uninterrupted causal line, which we don't have any control over, then you can't then say that there's a random mutation, because the word random, it contradicts determinism. No, no, but I, I, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is this, is that the, the point for determinism, which most atheists accept, okay, yeah, no problem, yeah, no, that's good, because we'll move on to a free will discussion, but it contradicts the idea of a random mutation, right? Yeah, so what I'm saying is this, is that first and foremost, the new atheistic narrative, which a lot of people, like living in the way, world that we live in now, are exposed to. You listen to Richard Dawkins, you, Richard, you listen to Sam Harris, you listen to those individuals, and then you come out with like some, something, something of what they're saying, and you rephrase it in your own kind of spiritual way, and you think that you're coming up with something new. Really and truly, you're just absorbing the social forces around you, yeah. and you're coming up with your own articulation. Accepted, but what I'm saying is this, is that those, 
narratives are self-contradictory narratives. Like the new atheistic narratives presupposes for the most part that the world is predetermined, but then it uses uh, the, the Darwinian evolution as a way of saying there's random mutation. So they have to understand, is it is there determinism or is there randomness? No, you, can't have you can't have both at the same time. So what I'm saying to you is that the case for determinism yes. is what actually... About your belief set? What I say is I'm a compatibilist. So I believe in free, we have free will. Yes. I believe we all have free will. Yes. But I also accept the fact that everything has been pushed in a certain way. There is an uninterrupted causal line okay. that we can't deny. It's like a river, right? So there's a, like a river bed. Yes. And water has free will, but unfortunately it has to follow where it's... So you could use that way. analogy. I would say all analogies are problematic. But having said... <laughs> you see, yeah, you see, on, on this issue of compatibilism, yeah. like free will versus determinism, yeah, yeah, do you get what I'm trying to say? But, but what I'm trying to say to you is this, is that now when we look at... Do you know, let me tell you something, yeah? Let me tell you something right now. Okay, but first you yeah. asked me my belief system and I asked you yours back. Yes. I just feel like you haven't answered Fine, question. let me let me come to you, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, let me let me explain something. Yeah. Usually a theist, I'm a theist, so yeah. I believe in one God, yep. and I believe that God is the organiser, the lawmaker mm -hmm. of the universe, all right? Now, for me to prove that to you, usually some people, they go for something like the fine-tuning argument. Okay. The fine-tuning argument goes the following. It goes like this. It goes that, look at the order around the world, yeah? yeah. The fact that the universe can harbour human life yeah. The, the probability of that being the case, or not being the case, will be okay. the number one, that you, that you have something that you Yeah, it's, it's almost impossible. Yes. I would say that there's a problem with that argument. There's only one problem. The problem is this, if we take determinism, yeah. or the idea that there's an uninterrupted causal line of events, mm -hmm. as something which is a given, which is actually uh, undeniable, you could, you could argue, yeah? yeah that actually there is an uninterrupted causal line of events, yeah? Then really, the, the chance that this universe could have been with the constituencies that it has is zero. The reason why is because there's no such thing as chance. Chance doesn't exist. Chance and randomness are in fact a byproduct of our ignorance. If we say this is random, or this is chaotic, or this is chance, what in fact we're saying is we cannot explain these set of variables. Had we had more information and understood why things are the way they are, we would be able to explain why this thing is acting the way it does. So in other words, the idea of chance factors contributing to the reason why things are the way they are is even by the, by the admission of atheists themselves, Sam Harris case in point, an impossibility from a, from a philosophical perspective. So therefore, I would say to you, number one, I believe that there's an organizer, a lawmaker of the universe. My proof for that is that there couldn't have been chance, not because of the probability, like I've used before the example, if I took a bag of, of um, of letters, and I threw on le letters, L-E-T-T-E-R-S. No, not letters, okay. no. If I took a bag of letters, yes. yeah, and like let's say a billion letters, yeah, and I shake it up nice and good, yes. and I throw it on the floor, it's not gonna be William Shakespeare's okay, Macbeth. So that, you must have heard that argument that if you gave a hundred monkeys typewriters. Yeah, 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 type, type, type it, yeah. They'd write the yeah. Bible. But what I'm, chance, I'm could good, but what I'm saying to you now is that chance does not exist, and there's no way of you proving it. So for me to say, okay, look. Okay, go on, I, I'm I'll asking, yeah. Monkeys, I'll get yeah. a bag of a billion letters and we can stand here for a hundred Good, years but now the hundred monkeys be... That's a hundred, there's a Listen. low chance, but it's a chance. But, and of course chance exists. But Why Lindsay, is, that, is it Lindsay? You call me Lindsay. Oh, sorry, what's your name? You haven't asked my name yet, oh. I'm Angela. No, I don't shake hands with women for, oh, for religious really? reasons. Yeah, yeah, for religious reasons. In that case, I don't think I can speak to you anymore. Why? Why is that you what? Shake you shake hands with her? Because I think that's really offensive. No, no, men... No, no, but, 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 hold on. Shake hands with her. But hold on, hold on, let me tell you something though, yeah? This is good, this is good. It shows you that they're incapable of having conversation with someone who doesn't believe in certain values. So they wouldn't be shaking hands with a tribal leader in Africa, they'd walk away from them. If they, because you're not allowed to shake hands with tribal leaders in Africa. If you, if, you were to, if you had a Jew, you wouldn't shake hands with them because an Orthodox Jew. So in other words, if you don't believe in our liberal values the way we accept them, and the way we shape them, and the way we, then we're not gonna have conversations with you. So that's intolerance. That's liberal intolerance. And I'm very happy it was on camera. Walk away. It's feministic intolerance, white person's intolerance. Very good, I'm very happy. Walk away, because you know what? I'm, I'm gonna to speak to people on my terms. You know, if, if you don't wanna to touch me, you don't have to touch me. I'm not gonna force you to touch me. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, and this is the ridiculousness of feminism. Let's move on the, the subject now. Let's change the subject to something else. If a woman, think about this from a second, feminist, second wave feministic femi uh, discourse. If a woman decided that she doesn't wanna be touched by a man, and that was her feministic stance, that actually I don't wanna be you know, touched by a man, etc., then it would be a, ma a matter of stance, a, ma a matter of ideology. And if I were to protest against that, I'll say, look, this is the autonomous decision-making of a woman 
who is second wave feminist, who decided that she doesn't want to be touched by a man. Why should you enforce your will to touch a man? And in the same way now, as Muslims, we're being forced to do certain things, like having a discussion of someone in the park, and at one point she says, okay, I'm not going to speak to you because you're not shaking my hand. So what's next? The point is this, is that as Muslims, we don't need to deal with people like that, to be honest with you. As conservative or whatever you want to call us, orthodox or traditionalist Muslims, if you don't want to speak to me on my terms, look, I'm accepting the fact that you might be a homosexual. I only ask you your pronouns. I mean, I don't even know what you are. Is you a man or woman or whatever, you know, Lindsay or whatever your name is, Jack, John, and your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whoever it is that you had with you. Because I don't know the pronouns of that individual that you had with you, that both of you walked away. But for me, say for example, I'm not in favor of transgenderism as a, as a, as a, as a stance, that you can actually change your, your biological sex from man to woman. I'm happy to have a conversation with someone who identifies themselves as a woman, even though they're biologically born as a man. Why? Because this is meant to be a free discussion with people that believe in different things. You can't handle it when someone doesn't want to shake your hand or touch your body or, or doesn't want you to touch their hand or shake their body. What's wrong with you? You know, at the end of the day, this is liberal, the muscular liberalism that David Cameron was talking about, which in fact is an impingement of traditionalist rights. We as Muslims have to stand here and say, you know what, if you don't want to talk to us on that basis, then we don't need to talk to you anyway. Because as Muslims, we have our own standards and our own standards are based on Quran, Sunnah. If you can't accept that, if, that's, if, if liberalism can't, and uh, it's permutations, feministic, liberalistic permuta permutations, can't tolerate anything other than itself. Listen carefully. If liberalism and its feministic permutations cannot tolerate anything other than itself, I say to you, well, what kind of liberalism is that? You don't even understand this ideology that you claim to believe in. If you are free willed, uh, someone who believes in free will, as her point was, and liberalism, then really, why should you force me to touch you? Why should you force me to touch you? This whole thing of, and it's been part of the discourse nowadays, shake my hand or else. What? I'm a, I'm a traditionalist Muslim. I might decide not to shake your hand. What, do, am I forced now to do something outside of my will? Because that becomes a kind of totalitarian system. You've got to do this and you've got to do that. All right, let's go to the synagogues and force the men and women to be together. Let's go to the synagogues and get the Orthodox Jews and get them to shake your hand. Same thing. Let's go to... And that's why we don't see them. We don't see those kinds of discourses with Jews. It's very unhappy, very um, un, unfair. When you look at, actually, I was looking recently on a Daily Mail newspaper, and they were showcasing the marriage between Jewish Orthodox people. And in that marriage, there was a separation between men and women, a full separation between men and women. Now think of this: instead of criticizing, as they have with the Muslim community, the act of separating men and women, what they instead decided to do was in a, in a sense, talk about the interesting nature of that without a negative under, undertone or subtext. So what I'm trying to say is that how comes you have this way of dealing with the Jewish community, but when it comes to the Muslim community, you're starting to do this. Now look, what I'm saying is that as Muslims, if you can't handle having people that, di that, that believe in different things in your community, then you can't handle your own ideology. It's not even about us anymore. You don't even abide by the principles you set for yourselves. And so we have to re retune, yeah, retune the, um, the narratives. I think, I think that nowadays there's the, a white person getting too rowdy like that. So to be honest, that's what it is. The white man thinks he's better than me. That's, I see that that white girl thought she was better than me. I'm not going to talk to you. Get out of here. I don't want to talk to you or your boyfriend there or girlfriend, to be honest with you. I don't know what she is or he is or it is that you had there with you next to you. And I don't want to talk to any white man thinking they're better than me. Better than me. Come on equal terms, you understand? Just because I'm brown and believe in something different, don't try and uh, colonialize me. I'm not your little slave and you're my master. We're past those days, my man. Bring your qualifications, I'll bring mine. I'm probably more qualified than you. Yeah, let's do an IQ test. The, the one that this racist Ralph was, I'll probably get higher than you. Don't try it, don't try it. This is the message to the white colonialists, neoliberal orientalists. Don't try it with us no more. Because as Muslims, we're not gonna have it anymore. And not only as Muslims, as ethnics in this country. If you can't handle the fact that we have baggage from other countries, you shouldn't have called us after the Second World War and your infrastructure was, ba uh, w w was banged up and you needed some blue collar workers to fix up the country. Because we are the outgrowth of that. We are the children of those immigrants that you called over. If you don't really like it, that you have brown people with different beliefs in your country, then your forefathers are the ones who called us here. If you don't really like it that you have Muslims in this country, don't call yourselves liberal no more. Just move to an authoritarian-style government. We got no time for you, yeah? 
at the end of the day, your liberalism means nothing to us. And that's why I say that the white colonial overlord narrative is bankrupt now. We don't need it no more. A woman walking away because I don't want to shake her hand. What's next? What, you want me to lick something? Or kiss something? What? Well, seriously. Oh, uh, may maybe three years from now, a woman's going to do this. And show me her breast and say, look, this is our way of, this is the white man's way of greeting. Can you touch my breast? I say, look, man, I'm not really into touching the breasts of other women. I say, but this is how we do things in our country. No, no, seriously. I say, okay, well, touch the breast. I say, look, man, I'm not, I'm not going to touch your breast. I say, no, no, touch these, both. both. <laughs> Next thing, get on your knees, please. <laughs> no, seriously, like what? Where is it gonna where is it gonna end? If you shake the hand today and they try and force you to do that, next thing is touch the breast. What? Why should I touch your uh, A cups or whatever you got? I don't wanna do that, I'm afraid. So at the end of the day, I think that the narrative ends here and the buck stops here. We've had enough, we're not gonna do what you want. And by the way, you have no legal right over me. You can't say, oh you have to shake it. No, no thanks. No, thank you. And your boyfriend that you had there, what? Your little boyfriend that you had, I'm not sure what his pronouns or her pronouns are. Yeah, we want to play the game. I don't know. What is it? Is it he or she or it? I don't know. What, should I shake his hand as well? I don't even know if he's a man or a woman. So next time, don't try it. Okay, next time, don't try it. And the neo-colonial narrative has got its ends here. So as Muslims, we have to, you know, we, we have to we start growing the confidence again. Walking away because I want to shake your hand. Get out of here. Imagine you're an employer. Think of this. Imagine that girl was an employer of some employees. Think of that for a second. Imagine that girl, if I was a Muslim trying to look for a job. And by the way, this happened to me. Yeah. And I'll tell you some secrets, by the way. I'm going to tell you some secrets. I, I was looking for a job as a young man. I knew that the first thing the white woman does is what? Bring her hand out. Shake my hand. What? We don't believe in. There's, there are some interpretations of it, but I think the traditionalists understand. Take my hand, I can't shake the hand. I know already I've, you know, I've got the qualifications, I've got the grades, I've got, you know, whatever, but because I didn't shake her hand, what's gonna happen? I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get the job. So I, do you know, I'll tell you a secret that I haven't told anyone before. Let me tell you a secret. What's your name, brother? Abdul Qadr. Let me tell Abdul Qadr a secret right now, yeah? I, at one point, I was looking for a job going to one place, another place, another place, and they all kept putting up their hands, and I was like, you know, I can't do it, yeah? So what I decided to do was this. I went to my, I'm not gonna mention what job it was, yeah? I went to the interview, and I wore some funky clothes. Like, not like what you're wearing. <laughs> Who's got funky clothes in there? I wore some funky, like nice colors, this and that, because I wanted them to think my beard was funky thing. Not, not religious thing, you get it? Yeah, like hipster guy, isn't it? So I walked in, this is what we have to do. We have to, what we have to do in the Muslim, in the, in the, in what traditionalist Muslims have to do to get a job nowadays. Imagine she was, I want you to put this question in mind. Imagine she was an employer, yeah? Imagine what kind of discrimination I would face if I was trying to get a job and she was my boss. Think about that. She walked away. By walking away, she's just humiliated herself in the worst way possible, yeah? And she's just put, herself as a case study for hundreds, tens of thousands of people to see. Just imagine this. She did, uh, I'm not going to talk to you. All right, cool. That's your stance, which means you can't tolerate certain traditional Muslim views or Jewish views or Christian views or whatever it may be. What I did was I came into the, to the interview and I wrapped my hand around like in a cast. <laughs> and I came in. And the woman was like this. And I was like this. <laughs> now, I had the cast on. Now, I didn't say to her my hand was broken or nothing. I just said, you know. And then this woman was persistent. <laughs> so she tried, for the other, she tried to go for the other hand. <laughs> yeah. So there was a coffee on the table like this. I grabbed and I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I saw her coming close, so I just went like this. <laughs>